Microsoft recently upgraded their Surface Pro line to include the Surface Pro 6, but they also updated the Surface Laptop line. Now, one of my favorite laptops from last year got to upgrade in terms of internals, now with quad-core CPUs, eighth generation, of course. It's got a new matte black finish, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the best looking laptops you can get right now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and review of the Microsoft Surface Laptop 2. Coming up. Today's video is brought to you by AlexandraStylus.com, makers of some great replacement tips for your Surface Pen. I'll put all the links below for more information. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. And if you haven't done so, make sure you check out my Surface Pro 6 review. I'll put the link below. If you subscribe to my channel, you by now know that I'm a big fan of the Surface lineup. I've been impressed with the Surface Pro for quite a bit of time. I recently reviewed the Surface Pro 6. It's one of my favorite tuned ones here in 2018. And I was a huge fan of the Surface laptop. And I was really curious to see what Microsoft would do for a follow-up. And I'm happy to report that Surface Laptop 2 has pretty much made improvements all across the board, just like the Surface Pro 6. And that's a good thing. Now here's a quick rundown of the specs. You get a 13.5 inch pixel sense display. You get eighth generation Intel processors, either the Core i5 or the Core i7, either eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM. Storage options start at 128 gigabytes, up to one terabyte of NVMe SSD storage. But enough with the specs, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, packaging is once again very premium, just like we saw with the Surface Pro 6. This is no exception. Holding the unit for the first time, you realize the size and weight is very similar to the last generation model. You also have your USB port on the power adapter. It's a 44 watt adapter with the use of the Surface connector, as you see here. And of course, you get your extension cable. Now you also get the unit itself, of course, and it is that gorgeous matte black finish, although this one seems to show a little bit more fingerprints than the Surface Pro 6. That's a bit interesting. But there's no denying this is one badass looking laptop. And yes, you can open it with one finger for those who are interested, and here's how far back it will go. Now, as you see, the Alcantara keyboard deck is here and it's very comfortable. I've used it obviously with last year's model and it's really very comfortable to type on and it's pretty durable, surprisingly held up well over time. Now, as far as the ports, what you get on the left side of the device is one USB 3.0, mini display port out, 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and moving over to the right side, you have your surface connector and that's it. There's no USB-C, there's no Thunderbolt 3, and that's a bit disappointing. But one added benefit of having the Surface Connector is that it's magnetic, meaning if you trip over the wire, your device won't go flying. Rather, it will pull off the device and everything should be okay. And that's not always the case with USB-C. But having said that, USB-C has become the standard and it's really nice to use one charger for multiple devices. Just saying. Now for me, not having USB-C is certainly not a deal breaker. It's a bit inconvenient, but then again, that's about the worst thing of this device. Everything else is pretty fantastic. Especially this, it's gorgeous 13.5 inch pixel sense display. It has a resolution of 2256 by 1504. That's 201 pixels per inch. And it has a three by two aspect ratio, making it good for both productivity and consuming media. To me, that's the perfect blend. And at 330 nits, it's plenty enough bright to get work done both indoors and outdoors as well. And here's how it did against its competition. That 330 nits is definitely about average as far as this category is concerned. Certainly not as bright as the new Surface Pro 6, as you can see from these results. You get some really deep black, some very vibrant colors. This is definitely one of the better displays you'll get on a 13 inch laptop, that's for sure. Now it also covers the color gamut really well with an excellent 176% sRGB leading this category. What else can I say? This is an excellent display. I think Microsoft hit a home run once again. 
And just like the Surface Pro 6, this is also compatible with the Surface Pen. Now I went with the black once again. It has 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity and it uses the Entrick Pen technology along with the fact that it uses one quadruple A battery which seems to last a long time as well. Now to me, this is not the ideal form factor. If you wanna do some serious note taking, if you wanna do some serious artwork, I think the Surface Pro 6 is a better choice since it has that tablet ability. This doesn't have that. The screen can only go back so far and there is some screen wobble as you can see. Now, one thing I noticed when using the Surface Pen over a long period of time over the years is that the pen tips will wear out. So you will need your replacement strategy. Unfortunately, the Microsoft offering is not only expensive, they only give you one HP tip. That's the most popular tip. That's the one people use the most. Now, my recommendation is to go with the Alexandra Surface Pen replacement tips. Not only are they cheaper than Microsoft's offering, they also are more durable. In fact, I've been using them for the past few months. They have held up a lot better than the Microsoft offering over that same period of time. In fact, this is what the Microsoft tip looked like after only three months. And with the Alexandra pen tips, changing out those tips couldn't be any easier, no tool needed. Not only do they offer the HB tips, they now offer the B tips as well. They all come in at $17.99, which is a lot cheaper than what you have to pay to get Microsoft replacement tips. I'll put all the links below for more information and where you can buy them. Now I'm a big fan of this keyboard at 1.3 millimeters of key travel. It's a little bit on the shallow side, but not much. The keys feel a little bit mushy to some. I actually like it. I think it has pretty good tactile feedback, comfortable typing over long periods of time. It's a multi-stage backlight so you can get work done in a dimly lit or dark room. That's pretty good. The Precision Touchpad works really well, it's very responsive, two finger scrolling is a pleasure, Windows 10 gestures work as advertised. Powering the Surface Laptop 2 is the Intel 8th generation quad-core CPUs, which Microsoft is touting as being 85% faster than the last model. Now performance is actually much improved over the last generation model. You're seeing at least a 40 to 50% boost in performance. That's thanks to the eighth generation quad core CPU. Now the one I have is the Core i5-8250U. It has eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Multitasking is really good on this device. Opening multiple tabs in Chrome, watching Netflix, YouTube, and the like is a pleasure on this device. Now when it comes to gaming, this is not a dedicated gaming machine. The built-in graphics just can't really handle AAA gaming, but you can do some Windows Store gaming and some older titles at lower settings definitely can work on this. But again, this is not a gaming laptop, but I think you already know that. Now, Microsoft updated the thermal solution on the Surface Laptop 2. Not only is the fan quieter, but it should come on less frequently compared to the last year's model. Now, when it comes to the thermals, the Surface Laptop 2 does get a little bit warm on the bottom side of the device. After I streamed a 15-minute HD video, the laptop's underside got as warm as 37.4 degrees Celsius, or that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Not overly hot, but it gets a little bit warm. Now, when it comes to the SSD, under the Crystal Disk Mark test, you see the reads and writes were actually pretty good. Read was actually very good. Write was a little bit low compared to some other laptops in this category, but not bad nonetheless. Now, when it comes to battery life, I'm happy to report that the Microsoft Surface Laptop 2 will last you pretty much all day, lasting nine hours and 22 minutes on my web surfing test at 150 nits over Wi-Fi. That's more than an hour above the eight hour and 14 minute premium laptop average, slightly above the eight hours and 43 minutes from the 13 inch MacBook Pro, but not quite as good as the Dell XPS 13, which lasted nearly 12 hours. But if you do need to plug in the 44 watt power adapter supplied in the box, will charge your device from zero to 100% in two hours and 35 minutes. Now I would say the speakers on the Surface Laptop 2 are pretty good, not great, but good. And they actually get pretty loud. There's a hint of bass, not bad for an ultra portable laptop. Now let's hear it in action. So what do you think about the Surface Laptop 2's front-facing camera? Good for Skype, good for video conferencing. But again, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, the room I'm in is not well lit, so keep that in mind. Considering that, I think this is actually pretty good. Again, I want to know what you think. 
let me know. So to wrap things up, can I recommend the all new Surface Laptop 2? And the answer is absolutely gorgeous, sharp pixel sense display, beautiful matte black option, eighth generation quad core CPUs for performance increase over last year's model and excellent battery life make this a winner all around. There are no real deal breakers here. The biggest negatives being lack of USB-C, lack of Thunderbolt 3, and no micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Other than that, this is a really solid laptop all around, improvements all across the board. I'm gonna give the Surface Laptop 2 a score of 92%, making it worth your money. So what do you think about the Microsoft Surface Laptop 2? This thing is freaking gorgeous. I love this matte black finish, although you do see the fingerprints a little bit more than you would on the Surface Pro 6. Coating may be different, I don't know. The materials may be a little bit different, but it is absolutely stunning in terms of looks. I like the upgraded internals, quad-core CPUs. This one is the Core i5, and it's absolutely perfectly working fine for what I like to use it for, web browsing, emails, some consuming media such as Netflix, YouTube, and the like. This gets the job done. Uh, biggest negatives here, lack of USB-C, lack of any kind of Thunderbolt 3, of course, lack of any kind of storage expansion. There is no micro SD card slot on this, so choose your storage options carefully. This pretty much has improvements all across the board. This is one of the best ultra portables you can get out there. The fit and finish, the build is off the charts. It's excellent as we've come to expect with the Surface line. Very premium, very high end. But I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. You're looking at about nine to nine and a half hours of battery life, which is all day battery life, which is pretty good. Uh, not the 14 and a half hours that Microsoft has claimed, but then again, those are not realistic conditions. In real world usage, you will get a solid nine to nine and a half hours out of this in mixed use, as I did. Now, what do you think about the price? It is a little bit pricey, that's for sure, but then again, you're paying for the premium look, premium feel, and overall great build quality. Now, I have something very special coming to my channel. I recently took delivery of the Tesla Model 3 about a couple of weeks ago. I did my first video on it. It should be ready this week. I should be preparing it very soon, so make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video because you won't want to miss this one. I'm really enjoying the Tesla Model 3, the all electric vehicle. Now it didn't come in at $35,000. It came in at a whole lot more. We'll talk more about that in the video. So make sure you stay tuned for that premiere video coming very soon. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.